Welcome to Recovered Truths. My name is Greg Reeser, the pastor here at Crosswork Bible Church. We invite you to come join us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're meeting right now at the conference, in, uh, conference room at the Holiday Inn Express. That's 1000 Vandalay Drive. Uh, we meet at 10 o'clock in the morning for fellowship and 10.30 we get on with the service. So come join us. Uh, when you do, bring a King James Bible, a pen and piece of paper with you, uh, because what we do here is we study God's Word, God's way. We know and understand that the, the church is the pillar and ground of the truth for every city, and our goal is to do just that, uh, to be the pillar and the ground of the truth. And we invite you to come join us as we study God's Word and uh, uh, come to a greater knowledge and understanding of God's Word. Uh, if you've been with us for too long, you, you should know right now we're going through the book of Romans. Uh, the book of Romans, uh, you know, everybody asks, uh, once I get saved, what should I, where should I start in the Bible? There's, there's 66 books. Which one should I start with? Uh, most people say the book of John. Well, if you really want to get established in who you are in Christ, the place to start would be the book of Romans. Uh, the book of Romans lays out for us the gospel by which we're saved. And then what we found out, the first five chapters of the book of Romans lays out for us um, our justification. So, of course, in order to get saved, first you need to know that you're lost. And so then that's what Paul does in the first three chapters of the book of Romans is tells us, here's the gospel. You deserve God's wrath. You deserve God's judgment. You deserve God's penalty for sin. And then the good news shows up in Romans chapter 3, verse 20, where he talks about the fact that we have access to His righteousness if we believe. By, by the faith of Jesus Christ, we have access to that. And then he tells us in Romans chapter 4, the way that you get that is by believing. Just as he justified Abraham, you can have that. And just as David was blessed to know that God will not impute sin, how, how, how happy can we be to know that God will not impute sin to you? You know, it's amazing. You have to go to church to find out that you have to be held responsible for sin. But God says, I'm not going to hold you responsible for that sin because I've already taken care of it at the cross. And as a saved person, I've already forgiven you of all trespasses, past, present, and future. Even the ones that you've forgotten about. So as you take a look at that and you scratch your head and think, well, the, the pastor down here at this church told me that I had to confess my sins and I had to ask for forgiveness every day. Well, the Scripture tells you you don't have to. In fact, the Scripture tells you that you've already been forgiven. And the fact that God is no longer going to hold you to your sin. Why? Because He's already taken care of it. Now, does that mean we get to go do whatever we want? Now, you know, you followed along with us long enough that Romans chapter 6 takes care of that because that's the perfect time to bring that up. And then what he says in Romans chapter 7, we dealt with it the last time, the fact that we're dead to the law. And here we are, we find ourselves here in Romans chapter 8 where we find out that we're dead to the flesh. So it's really interesting. The way that, the way that God lays out the book of Romans... Right, Romans. Romans is real quick. Go over to go over to Second Th uh, Timothy, Second Timothy chapter three, and this is this is one of those things that's really interesting. We've talked about this before, but I want to make sure that we have this uh, for those that may not have seen it before. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen it says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of God." By the way, that means God spoke the words. So when you read a King James Bible, you have God's Word written to you in the English language. Now I know what a lot of folks do is they'll go get them an ESV or an NIV and all that stuff. And we've already talked about that. That stuff is no better than a commentary. But you have in your hand, if you have a King James Bible, you have God's Word to you in, an Eng in the English language. And that means that that book, the King James Bible, is the final authority in all things in the manner of life. Whether it's our walk, destiny, or duty, everything that we are supposed to know is found in this book. A lot of people, they'll say, well, you just never know what God has in store for you. And what they do is they quote 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 
The problem is, is they don't go quote verse 10, which tells us that He has revealed them things to us through His Spirit. And what He does continue on through there is, the way He does it is through this book. The Holy Spirit teaches us through the Scriptures. And the only way that He can do that is when we store those verses up into our soul. And as you take a look at those things, that's how the Holy Spirit works. And we've talked about this before. The Spirit of God does not work apart from the Word of God. Which means, if you think the Holy Spirit's doing something in your life and it doesn't line up with Scripture, then your thinking is wrong. And then we also know that the Word of God doesn't work apart from the Spirit of God. Which means, if you think that the Word of God says something, but the Spirit knows that it says something different, then what you need to do is change your mind to what the Word actually says. This book isn't some mystical, mythical book that we can't understand or that we've got to have some degree in Greek and Hebrew and, and, and all this other stuff or have some th go to some theological seminary to find out. God made sure that you, where you're sitting, even if you have a fourth grade education, can read this Bible and understand it. You don't need some pastor. You don't need me. In fact, we've said it before. We're the only church in town that will tell you that we want you to come here and learn and then go. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want people to come here and stay forever. Now, what we would love to do is have folks come and come to the knowledge of the truth and then go start their own ministry. That's God's purpose. That's God's goal. And that's the issue that hopefully we can come down through here to see. But here's the issue. When we come down to it, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And He gives us some things here. Notice. Doctrine. Reproof. Correction and instruction in righteousness. Now, why does he do that? It's a great question. Verse 17 answers that for you. Notice that here's the purpose, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Do you know what it takes to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works? That stuff right there. And what's interesting is when you go through and you start studying God's Word, specifically Paul's epistles, you find out that the book of Romans is a doctrinal book about the cross work of Jesus Christ and what He's done for us. Then you've got First and Second Corinthians, which is reproof of bad behavior. Then you've got Galatians, which is correction of bad doctrine. Then you go to the book of Ephesians. And in Ephesians, you've got doctrine according to the, to the church, how the church, the body of Christ, is to function. Not just out in the world, but in the local assembly specifically. Then you've got uh, Philippians, which is, again, reproof of some bad problems that they had. Then you've got Colossians where you've got correction of some bad doctrine, they weren't holding the head, which is Jesus Christ. They weren't holding the head the way they should have. And then, of course, then you've got doctrine in First and Second Thessalonians that has to do with His coming. So here you've got the cross, here you've got the church, and here you've got His coming, which, by the way, is not the coming in, in Matthew chapter 24. That coming in First and Second Thessalonians has to do with the fact that Jesus Christ is going to one day come back, not touch the ground, and He's going to catch us up together to meet Him in the clouds, and then we're going to go stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to get the reward based upon our service here on earth, and then He's going to go and present us to the Father as holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. And that's something that will take place one day, and that's a different thing. By the way... If you're caught up into heaven and you're perfect and blameless, you don't, you don't need reproof anymore. You don't need correction anymore. And then you've got the instruction in righteousness, which has to do with First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. 
And what you have there is the structure of how God has designed His Word to work in and through you to produce His life in you. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 tells us that... Notice, let's go there real quick so I don't mess it up. Because it's a, it's a beautifully wonderful verse. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Here's what it all comes down to. We've looked at 1 Thessalonians 2.13 which talks about the fact that it's God's Word that works in and through us. Right? He says that, that, that they accepted and they received the Word of God as it is in truth, the Word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. What the issue is, is do you believe the verses on the page or not? Or do you believe some commentary? Or do you believe some doctor? Or do you believe some pastor? Or do you believe some youth leader? Do you believe some hymn book? By the way, the majority of people get their doctrine from hymns, whether it's the old ones or the new ones. That's where they get the majority of their doctrine from. The doctrine comes from, right here, Romans, Ephesians, and First and First and Second Thessalonians. If you want to find doctrine, get in the book. The interesting thing is, the first of Paul's epistles is the book of Romans for a reason. That's the foundation upon which everything else is going to be built on. And if you don't get the foundation right, then what's going to happen to your structure is it's going to fall apart. And so then you look around at your life and think, why is my life falling apart? Well, one is because we live in a sin-cursed world. It's not because God's trying to punish you or judge you or anything like that. The reason that life is falling apart is because we live in a sin-cursed world. The second one is, is we're trying to fix those things in our sin-cursed world with more sin-cursed people. So what we need to do is find out who we are in Christ because of the cross and go do that. And by the way, if you think you're Israel or spiritual Israel, you're just going to make your life even harder. So when you go back and you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and think, well, this verse is for me today to live in the dispensation of the grace of God, it won't work that way. When you look at those verses and, and everybody goes around and says, well, you know, if, if, if two or three are gathered together and they believe on this same thing, the touching this one thing, it shall happen. How many times have you done that and it's not happened? Now be real. Be real with yourself and be real with your family and be real with the situation and don't pretend. How many times did that not happen? And then you go to the pastor and say, why didn't it happen? He's like, well, you just didn't have enough faith. Well, how do I get more faith? Well, you know, you just got to wait and see. Again, faith isn't some untangible thing. Faith is just taking God at His Word. And then you'll go back and say, well, I just really believe this time. How, how hard did you believe? I really believed. All right, and it still didn't happen? No. Why? Probably because you have some secret sin that you've not confessed. Well, we already started off the program talking about that, right? And what they're doing is theological Bible jump rope, and they're trying to figure out a way to get around the issue for the verses not working because they're supposed to work, right? But the problem is, is you can't make God do something that He's not doing today. And I've said it before, I'm still waiting on the bicycle when I was six because I was told whatever I wanted to ask for it and I would get it. I never did get it. Why? Because that's not what God's doing today. Not because I didn't believe hard enough or I had some secret sin. It's because that's not what God's doing today. Find out what God's doing today. Get in the book of Romans. And what you find out real quick is the book of Romans is going to help you take care of all those issues. And we've already started, and that's why it's important for us to be able to start off. But here's, here's the main goal. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Do you know where you find that out? Romans chapter 6. We spent a whole bunch of time talking about that. That baptism that had nothing to do with water. That's, that, that's the identification that we have been 
we have been crucified with Christ. We have been buried with Christ. We've been raised with Christ to walk in newness of life. The thing that makes it possible for us to live in the newness of life is because of the spiritual transaction that God did in and through us when the Holy Spirit took us. By the way, it's beautiful when you think about it. The, the, the Godhead is involved in your salvation. God the Father spoke the words that you believed about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and the Holy Spirit comes along and takes you and baptizes you by the faith of the operation of God into Jesus Christ. Now that's beautiful. And it's not some water ceremony. But notice, he says... I am. And what Paul's doing here is he's reckoning it to be true for himself. We talked about that in Romans 6, right? That we're to what? Know some things. Head knowledge. Reckon it to be true. Move it down into our heart. And then yield our bodies as instruments of righteousness so that the information that we knew that we now believe is now manifest in our life. And here's the best part. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. It's not me. That's the issue. It's Christ. Notice he says, And the life which I now live in the flesh. That's currently... Right now, as I live in this world, and everything that's messing up going on around us is going crazy, the one constant is right here. Notice, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, we talked about that verse before. It's not faith in the Son of God, but it's by the faith of the Son of God. Here's the issue. By Jesus Christ's faith to do what He did on the cross, God the Father says, I accept what you did. And then He says to us, if you trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, if you trust in that and that alone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you and I'm going to place you into living union with the Son so much so that His life is now your life. And the life that I live now is by the faith of the Son of God who, who, what? who loved me and gave Himself for me. So when we look there at the faithfulness of Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross, guess what? <clears throat> He's now able to live His life through us. And so when we look at people who are living the life, we don't praise them. Well, you know, so-and-so is just a great person. No, that's the life of Christ living through them. So you glorify the, the, the Son. And the only way you find that out is you go, you go read the book of Galatians, which tells you it's not in ceremonies. In that instance, he was talking about dealing with circumcision. It's not in ceremonies. It's in daily intake of God's Word, and he's on the heels of talking about the fact that it's the Spirit that's living in you. And it's amazing because what happens, we talked about it before, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit take up residence inside of us the moment that we get saved. And we're also in Christ. We're also in the Spirit. And we're also in the Father. Now, you tell me. People say, well, I just want to be closer to God. You can't get closer. But what you need to do is get in the book of Romans and find out how close you are and go live like you're supposed to live. How's that? I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 8. This 
So that was about a 20 minute introduction to Romans chapter 8. But I wanted you to see the importance of this. You know, we looked at this, and that's why it's important to start off with the book of Romans. The book of John is, is wonderful, don't get me wrong. But if you want to find out who you are in Christ, you've got to go read the book of Romans. That's where we start. That's why we have started doing this program and in, in going through the book of Romans. Because it's so vitally important. And what's interesting is the first five chapters tell you about your justification. The next three chapters, 6, 7, and 8, talks about your sanctification. Which most everybody around thinks it's some sort of process that I've got to do something to get sanctified. By the way, you, the moment you get saved, you're already sanctified at the fullest possible way in, in Christ. And that's positional truth. You know, we've talked about the differences of the positional and the, the, the practical type stuff. And, the, and our practice should mimic our position. Well, if we don't know our position, then how can our practice look like our position? And that's why he says, As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. And what it comes down to is here in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Notice he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You realize this is the first time that you see the Spirit mentioned in the book of Romans. What's really interesting is you come down through here. Most people do this. They come to Romans chapter 8, verse 1, and they'll say, ah, this is about salvation, so if you want no condemnation, then you need to get saved. He's not talking about salvation. He's talking to people that are already saved. And he's coming off the hills of Romans chapter 7 saying, don't go try to live by the law because you can't do it because the law will condemn you. What you should do is in your service is what? He's not talking about salvation here. He's talking about service. Quit putting yourself under a condemnation. And don't let a pastor or, a, or, a, or a, a doctor or a youth leader or anybody else put you under something that God's already freed you from. If you want liberty, true liberty, if you want freedom... True freedom. Come here. And we'll show you the verses that tell you about that. But notice here, Romans chapter 8 verse 1. <clears throat> he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now what a lot of people do is they'll come to that Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and they'll say, Well, the last part of that verse isn't supposed to be there. Can I submit to you right now that it is supposed to be there and anybody that says that it's not supposed to be there has not done their homework. Well, it's not in the original manuscripts. All right. You realize there's two different manuscripts, right? The good one and the bad one. Guess what? Guess which one takes it out? The bad one. So when you just go back and you look at the manuscript, you don't understand that there's a difference between two different manuscripts back there, and you got people fussing and fighting and hollering all the time saying, it's not supposed to be there because it's not in the Greek. And it was a copyist error that they brought it up in the other one. Now, the wrong manuscript doesn't have it in there. So then everything that's, that's, that's been copied down from that wrong manuscript, do you know what you do with it? Toss it in the trash or put it underneath the table, table leg to make your table not wobbly anymore. That's about the only thing they're good for. What you need to do is get a King James Bible that's got every verse in it that's supposed to be there. And it doesn't have all the verses that's not supposed to be there. It's been preserved throughout the years and ages so that we can have it and handle it. So when we read this verse, we know that there's no condemnation to them that, not, that walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. So what he's saying is, quit trying to go live under the law. And you know, most people that don't want that in that verse is because they're trying to put people back under the law. You're saved by grace through faith, but you've got to go keep this law. And that's not what God's doing today. The last little bit here, I want to I offer this booklet to you. It's called Dictionary of the Gospel. 
Now, the whole purpose of this book is to get you interested in the Bible. This isn't the be-all, end-all. This isn't the thing that you're supposed to study every day. But what this, do, what this is designed to do is to get you into God's Word. The, book, the Bible is the issue. But what we do is we offer you this free book. It's, free, it's absolutely free. We've, got, we've had a chance to send, send some out. And I want you to be one of those folks that get it. If you're interested in one of these, please give us a call or email us. Either way, and we'll send this to you absolutely free. We'll, probably, we'll also send you the, uh, the information packet that we have on our church. But I, w I want you to stick with us as we go through the book of Romans here because it's vitally, vitally important. I want to thank you for joining us today. And until next time, grace and peace. you to join us for the 2021 Bluegrass Bible Conference brought to you by Crosswork Bible Church, which will be held on June 18th, 19th, and 20th at the Holiday Inn Conference Room located at 1000 Vandalay Drive, Frankfort, Kentucky. Food and drinks will be provided. The theme for this year is What's Going On in the World? Some topics will include the Foundations for Society, the chipping away at the foundation. The Bible is more relevant than you think, among many other topics. We encourage you to join us for this free event. There are no registration fees and no cost for food. For more information and free registration, visit crosswordministries.org or call us at 502-249-8034. We hope to see you there.